Okay, what we're going to go over is the time schedule, and it's already been done, and the time schedule is 7 a.m. The, the unit goes into what's called normal hours, and normal hours means the switches are locked out, and all the lights in the public areas turn on. That would be the corridors and the lobby. And that's for the first floor only. The first floor system is a separate system than the second through fifth floor. That's its own system, and we're going to go over that one next. The time that the lights go to the next phase, which would be after hours, is 8 p.m. After hours means the lights turn off, same areas, the lobbies, the corridors, and the switches become activated. So now you can turn the lights on and off as you pass through the areas using the switches. And there are switches in the lobby, in the corridors. So if you wanted to change those times, you do it with the remote, which we've, I've showed you before, we used it for other things. So we'll turn it on. And because it's uh, infrared, you could point at any infrared device. But on the first floor, if you remember in previous tapes what I had said, there's three panels. The schedule is being driven from a panel, but not all three panels in the case of this first floor, only the B panel. The reason I programmed it and made the B panel masters because on the second floor, where they only have one panel on, on each floor, and we're using the schedule in the second floor panel, which is also on the B riser. So uh, you come to the panel, and there's a little uh, infrared receiver here. It actually says IR, silk screened on it, and that's what we're going to aim at. Now, like I said, so uh, the reason I'm in the panel, and because, like I said, you could go to any switch in the system, but it's got to be coming out of the B panel, and there's no way to really know that. So I, I feel it's safer to come to the panel and do it directly at the B panel only to pull the schedule. So what we're going to do is take the remote and there's a number of menus and we're going to go down, 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 more, down to where it says panel setup. And then I press the large button. It says point to any R enabled device, which we're using this. So roughly I'm going to aim it right about there. And it just gives me some setup information, which you could verify. Location settings, I'm just going to press that. And it does say New York. I'll go down over to done, because we're not going to change that. And you could check the date and time, or it's easier to check it. Just go to panel status, which will also give you the panel time. Uh, it's right now, it's and verify that it's correct. It gives me the time of 8.43, September 2nd, and that's all correct. It also gives me the sunrise time and the sunset time uh, because we just previously told it, or it knows we're in New York. Now, what we, now the, the programming is down to where it says panel programming. So I'm gonna press that and then I either have schedules or holidays. I'm going to leave it. It's already highlighted on schedules. And it just reminds you you're at the first floor B relay panel. So I'm going to press that. So each schedule, in its terms, is an event. So to turn lights on, that's an event. To turn lights off, that's an event. So in this case, we're using just two events. Event one, to turn lights on, and event two, to turn lights off. So what I've done is I wrote that down, and typed it out. And what I'll do is I'll just leave this in this panel when we're done. But just to remind you so it doesn't get confusing, I may use the term schedule interchangeably. and. You know, the word schedule is on there, but it's really an event. So event one, 7 a.m., goes to normal hours. So we don't use the term on or off, we use normal. And, what, and then here in the parentheses is what it does. Lights turn on and public switches are locked out. 
I say public switches, meaning the lights, the, the switches in the, in the med prep and in the bedrooms, they all still work. They don't get locked out. These are just the ones that are exposed in the corridor and the lobby. Event two is 8 p.m., and that goes to after hours, not off. So after hours, but what that actually means is lights turn off, and all the switches will now function as on-off switches, as you would expect. Okay. So I'll leave that in here, and let's go over if you want to change these times. So we left off here under event one. That's the first one that came up. So the next thing down is the type. Type meeting, normal hours, after hours, there are other choices, there's on, there's off, but we're not using those because it won't change the mode of the switches. Next thing down is time. And in this case, it's 7.00. This is in 24-hour format. So for 7 a.m., yes, we want to see 7.00. And then the group, and what, it, what this is actually doing is, this at this event, at 7 a.m., it's going to normal hours for a group. That group is one. There's not a lot of groups in this system. So always make sure that's it's one, if it gets changed, but it should always be at one. So group one is the carburetor lights, the lobby lights, etc. So. But if I wanted to change the time, I would just go back up to the time. Let's say I did want to make it, um, say, 9 o'clock. I use the up and down arrows, and then I use the sideways arrows to change it to 9 o'clock. Then go down to, if I want to exclude a day or add a day, there's something here that says active days. If I press active days, uh, it gives me all seven days, well actually plus holidays, and there's a Y or an N that could be by. Right now I have all seven days plus all holidays as yes, so that means the time is going to the lights are going to turn on and off as we were talking about all days. But if you wanted to exclude the holidays, which I didn't think you did, you know, because it's a hospital, you would just go down the holidays and hit just use the arrows to make it put an in there, and then I would send that. So I'm going to put it back to yes. So it done when you're done changing it. It doesn't send it yet. It's just you've just edited the, the scheduled days. So uh, I'm going to set this back to seven so that I don't inadvertently send, send it to nine. But as you saw, I changed it to nine. And then the last thing you do is, edit, is go over to the word send. And I'm going to press send. And I would press send again. And it would change, make the change. So let's go to event two. That would be our after hours at 8 p.m. So I'll go back, I'll just do it all over so you can see what we did. So starting at the home button, which is the top menu, go down, go down to panel setup, and then panel programming, and then schedule. And it always comes, starts with event number one, whether it's used or not. So this way I would now use the right arrow, change it to two. Nothing changes until I use the down arrow. Then it wants me to aim it and point it again, and then it'll pull event two's information. So now you can see what's under event two, just like we wrote down. Event two goes to after hours at and then they said it's in 24 hour time clock. So it says 20 for time, 20, and group one also. We want to change that same group. So if I wanted to change it from 8 o'clock to maybe 7 o'clock, I would change the 20 to 19 and send. Same thing, active days, it should be the same, same days. If you turn them on, I would turn off, turn off the same days. So that's the same there. Done.
in this case, on, on the first floor, we're only using two events. So if I was just to show you, if I go to three, there should be nothing there. It just defaults to off as your first choice, but as you can see, there's no time there, there's no group there. So it really means there is no event three. Okay, so that's, that's how you change the time. I'm going to leave this uh, sheet in the in the panel, and we're going to next go to the second floor, and I'll show you how to change that. That one, we have more schedules in it. Okay, we're in the on the second floor in the electric room, and we're going to do the scheduling for the second floor, third floor, fourth floor, and fifth floor. That's all coming out of this panel. Same as the first floor. In this case, on the second floor, you could actually do what I'm going to do on any device on this floor. Well, I should say any device that's not in a what we call standalone room, like you can't do it in the uh, activity room or something like that, because that's not connected to this. But anything in the lobby or the corridor will access this. But to play it safe to get you in the habit of just using the panels. So you don't get confused on the first floor with the other two panels. We'll, we'll go right to the panel. So same thing, we're going to aim it at the same spot. Uh, just to recap, we're going to go to the same area. Go down to panel setup. And just to confirm, let's just go through this again. Location settings, let's just make sure Okay, so it says New York. That's good. Time and date. I'll just hit that again, make sure it's correct. Um, the year and the time is, is correct. And so panel status will give us everything we just looked at. It'll give us, it won't give us the location, but it gives us the sunrise and sunset. So that'll give you a ballpark idea that it knows we're in the right area. All right, we're done. So what I came up here for is to show you the, the time scheduling. And we're going to go into that, again, go into schedules and hit that. Um, let me get the cheat sheet for you. Okay, so in this case, what I did was I created a different schedule for each floor, just in case in the future they decide that they want the different floors on different schedules. Maybe the fifth floor isn't occupied and they don't really need the lights on all day long at night. So that's why I did it that way. And because you really can't name the schedules at anything efficient, you just use the word event. So what I did was event two, there is no event one. Event two represents the second floor on. Event three represents the second, the third floor, well I shouldn't say on, normal. Fourth is represents the fourth floor, normal time. Fifth, fifth. Then I made the twelfth, basically it's the same, it's it's event two, I just added a one, that represents the after hours. 13, 14, 15 for after hours. That's my train of thought on this. That's why it's kind of, appears random, but now that you understand my method. Okay, so now it becomes the same as what we did on the first floor. So we'll go in, uh, let's just go to something other than one and two. So let's go to five. So. Uh, as I was saying, one does come up, but it, it defaults to off, and it has no time, and it has no group. So we're going to go use the right arrow to five, and then go down, and then it tells you, it reminds you, to point to the IR. So now, event five, normal hours, 7.05. I'll have to edit this. I made it 7.05. Um, 
and that is group five. I'm going to edit this before I leave it, um, and because in order to do the three, the four, the four floors individually, there are different groups. So the fifth floor is group five. Everything else being the same, so you would change the time, um, but make sure if you're in event five, it's going to be group five because we're only affecting the fifth floor. Even though we're doing this from the second floor, this panel runs all four floors. So I'll go up to 15 now, just to show you we're still using group five. So 15 is after hours at 8.05, and that's group five. Let's go to two. So two, event two, is the second floor, normal hours, 702, group two. So your group two represents the second floor, group three is the third floor, group four is the fourth floor, group five is the fifth floor. And the reason I staggered the time, and maybe it's not really necessary with LEDs, I just been doing this for a long time, is to keep the load down so that if I was to do four floors all at the same time, turn lights on at seven o'clock on all four floors, it's a lot of inrush. Uh, it's probably unnecessary, it's just a habit of how I've been doing this for years, just to stagger floors by the minute. You could change this or just leave it, it's already in there. Okay, but that's why you'll see just odd times. 702, the third floor is 703, the fourth floor is 704, fifth floor is 705 as we started. So that's why I did that. Probably not critical with LEDs anymore. Okay. And that is, uh, so that's everything on the to do the second through fifth floor panel. Um, you can go into other panels and try to, well you can, it'll let you schedule it, but it's only going to conflict with this panel. So, so I suggest don't go to the third floor, fifth floor, and do this. It'll let you enter stuff and create stuff, but it will just confuse the system in general. So do everything for the second floor. We're still on the second floor. Right now we're in a little um, back of house corridor where the electric closet was. But I just want to show you everything I just showed you in the panel, as I was stating. Any device that has an infrared little window here, you could do the same thing. So I'm going to do the same routine. Go down to panel setup. And I get the same information, location, date, time, panel programming, schedules. I'll scoot over to two, go down, and we're back where we were. So event two, normal, hours, 702, group two. So I just wanted to show you that you can also do what I just did from within the panel. Let's just say you can't get in that room, it's locked, you could, could do it here. But one thing to keep in mind, on the first floor, it's got to be the switches that are fed out of the B panel. Um, so just to give you a clue, that would be anything in that elevator lobby is tied back to the B panel. So if you can't get in an electric closet and you need to change the schedule, use one of the switch plates in the elevator lobby, the main elevator lobby. That's a safe bet that that one goes back to the B panel. Anything else is, it may, you know, we don't know where the, you wouldn't know where the crossover is, so don't do it anywhere else. Okay, so that's just a little hint for you.